Hi! We're so glad. This is our exit interview. So first, we're going to be talking about the weekend in review, and then we're going to answer 20 minutes worth of questions. We can't answer any more than that because we've got to get on the road. So, let's get busy. Ready? I'm okay. ready. Okay. Now, we're, gonna, we're filming here too, guys, so <laughs> we're not ignoring you. This is for my channel, our exit interview. And then we'll answer questions after that. And then we're all yours. Yes. And we have two poodles who are very happy to be here. Two freshly groomed poodles. Okay. Boy, Suzanne, what a weekend. Woo! <laughs> we got an audience outside. Yes. So, it's Saturday. This is our last day. We pulled it off, I think. You would have thought we ran out of steam by today, right? You would have thought so. We groomed a lot of dogs and a lot of cold. Yeah. Today we had some challenges, but let's start in order. Let's yes. let's review this in order. Yeah. Thursday evening, we groomed a sheep who named Booger. Very cute. And, and Booger, he was a booger. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was it was a good indication when he first pooped as soon as you put him in his little holding room. And then when we let him out, he ran around the kitchen. Oh, and I forgot to tell you. When they came to pick him up after his sister was really bad, he pooped all over himself, and I had to rewash him while his owners were here. His owners gave us an hour and a half to groom both dogs. Two dogs. They returned in an hour and a half, and I said, it'll be 20 more minutes. They returned again before I texted them. One dog had pooped all over himself, and I had to rewash him. Well, so they had to wait for you to clean them up. Oh, my gosh. You know, you didn't tell me that. Mm -mm. I was going to text you, but it was late. You were probably trying to forget all about it. No, I want to share. Ever. Yeah. You were like, can you believe it? He not only You guys know kitchen. me, right? I fuss. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So he did. He came with a, a, friend, a sister, <clears throat> and uh, she was a Catan, right? And she was a puppy. Yeah. She was a puppy, so we were trying to decide which dog we were going to groom for the video. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we did. So, so that happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we did it. We got through it. That was the start of our weekend <clears throat> together. So that was Thursday night. So then Friday rolls around, and we know we've got a big day and a very exciting one because Friday we were getting a beautiful American Cocker Spaniel named Thicket who was in full coat. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And sweet. Prettier than I, her coat was so pristine. I wasn't prepared for that. She, her owner grooms her. Her home groomer in perfect, perfect condition. Yeah. A plus. We were worried. Triple A plus. Triple A plus. We, we wanted to show uh, how to properly card down the back coat on a Cocker Spaniel. And we, when we had her in the tub, we were worried, are we going to be able to show this technique? Because she's perfectly carded right now. Her mom <laughs> nailed it. But we did get to card her. Yeah, we, we did, got enough we got out to demonstrate. Yeah. Yes. So that was a win. Yeah. So Thicket was a total win. And you're right. She was an absolute sweetheart. Perfect. I'm in love. Yeah, <laughs> and you guys are seeing the video, so and the pictures that we got of her and the the warmth of her personality. Mm -hmm. It was it was very neat to experience that. It was touching. Yeah, so that was a total win. Yeah. So thanks for setting her up. Yes, and I was looking forward to her. <laughs> yeah, me too. Plus, you have raised and shown three cockers. Yeah, and you miss it. I do. I love the breed. So she knows. I'll never own another one, but I love the breed. Well, is it just because of the work? The work involved in the maintenance? Um, no, I would totally have another one. You just said you wouldn't. I would, but I would. <laughs> These are my last two dogs that I plan on having. Oh, and they're going to be around for at least 15 more years. Yeah. So... I'm almost 60. I'm going to be 75 by the time these guys are gone. So I'm not planning ahead that far. Yeah, okay. Let's just let's leave it at that. I think you're right. I... Anyway, then on Friday, we did BB and Ammo. 
Yes, these two. Two toy poodles. They're mine. Yes. And Suzanne specifically grew Bibi out in mega coat because we wanted to do the English saddle trim on Bibi. And that required a lot more coat. So more than she had. And um, we have a big audience. We have an audience outside. <laughs> We're in the, my waiting room at my shop. <laughs> so she did it. Suzanne kept, you kept her bathe. How did you grow out that coat? What did you have to do? Every five days, she had to be washed and blow dried. We keep the hair banded in between them washed, I mean brushed out about every two days. So it's a lot of work. Yeah. It's a lot of hair, as you can see. Were you excited? Even to now, do, we cut it, a ton off. Yeah, we did. But were you excited to, to see this English saddle trim on BB? She's adorable yeah. in it. It's so cute. She is. We were just looking at the pictures and sharing the pictures that we took of her in yeah. that trim. And it's beautiful. But what was really <clears throat> impressive to me as being a, a VIP front row and center watching this groom take place is that Suzanne didn't have a pattern to follow when she put this on BB, meaning that she hadn't previously groomed her in the English saddle trim and then just let her grow for six weeks and then re-groomed her. She had to apply the pattern trim to a dog with a ton of coat. Yeah, so way too much coat. A lot. It was overgrown. I normally wouldn't do that. It was a lot. But it just worked out that she was way overgrown. But so. that's what made it so fun to I think watch. so, because it was a transition, it was a transformation, and that that's that's fun. That's that was exciting for me. You didn't look a bit nervous. You you were just excited. Yeah. You were excited to get to it. In fact, she wanted to do BB first because she's been waiting so long to do this trim. I said, Should we do ammo? Because we're doing ammo in the sporting trim. Should we do ammo or BB? Let's do BB. <laughs> yeah. She was excited. I couldn't wait. She needed a haircut. <laughs> it's like, let's get this hair off of here before I have to brush it one more time. Oh my God, I know. <laughs> but I just think you were excited to I put was. that trim on her. I was, it's cute. Mm. I mean, look how cute this is. Look at her. She's stacking on my lap. Look at her over there. She is such a showboat. <laughs> she, she is. She's a showboat. She's a total show dog. <laughs> yes, she is. She struts her stuff, let me tell you. When she, she lays should. down, her tail's still up. She Ooh, lays flat right out and the tail's still up. She stays stuck. <laughs> <laughs> she was perfect though, and she's such a good dog to work with. Uh, I mean, that was a wonderful video to film. She's I, a funny personality. Yeah, we noticed she has her tail goes straight to she's, the left she's when, a weirdo. She, when she's around me. Suzanne's like, is something wrong with her tail? What do you mean? It's going over there to the left. Every and then, time Amy leaves the room, it goes, it goes back, back up. up. And, Amy and then I come in and it goes to the <laughs> side. <laughs> We're <I'm> cracking up. <laughs> Why didn't we get that on camera? We could. I don't that. know. That would be funny. <laughs> yes. So that happened. But anyway, it was exciting. So then we go to Ammo next on Friday. Ammo is Suzanne's second toy poodle. And these are both Finnish champions. Mm -hmm. So they obviously do have great coat, great confirmation, um, which makes it exciting to groom that because when you have a dog that is that has proper confirmation, it, it's easier to pull off the trim that you're looking to do because they already have the proper build. And these two definitely have good confirmation. So we, we put ammo in a sporting trim and um, it was beautiful. He, he turned out really cute. Very I'm pleased with him. Strutty, we call yeah, him. Yeah, right? he's strut. She, he's strut. That's yeah. right. But I, I it, as far as ammo goes, and the and the trim, the experience we did. Well, we tasseled his ears. Okay, so that is one thing with, that was a little bit different about uh, what you would see normally on a sporting trim. But there's a reason why you chose to tassel his ears. He grows ears that are like this big around. They're very very full. And he's also got one ear that's cockeyed. So when he perks his ears up, this one hangs normal and this one flips forward. When it flips forward, it sends all that hair right into his eye. So even if it's shorter trimmed, it still flips in his eye. If it's long, it flips in his eye. 
and he tends to have teary eyes anyway, you can kind of see, but when his ears are flipping his eyes, it's excessive. Oh, so but it irritates them mm -hmm. more. Yeah. So, so you choose to keep him in so the So I tassel keep him tasseled so the shaved part falls below his eye line and that keeps him more comfortable. For us, it's all about comfort. Yeah. You know, we want our dogs to be comfortable. But it also looks awesome. So. It's cute. Boy, that's a win. And I came up with the tassel, so I was going to give him German ears, which are short all the way around. I was in the middle of shaving them. My husband walks by the room and he goes, wait, I right like there. That. I like that. I'm like, you like really? tassels? And he's like, yeah, right there. Leave it there. And I'm wow. Like, I never would have guessed. You learn is? something new about your spouse every day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We sure do, don't we? I never would have thought he'd like tassels. I do love it. It is cute. Mm -hmm. Not to mention the one thing that happened with Thicket that, that I thought you were going to lose your mind about. Do you remember? No. Thicket the Cocker Spaniel. Oh. We're grooming along and setting that ear. Oh, I never <laughs> told Mom. She's in, I don't think she noticed. Yeah, it wasn't bad. It was bad to me. <laughs> if you were watching. <laughs> oh, she said. A little, oh, she goes. <laughs> yeah, I was shaving down Thicket's ear and I was making a V shape right in the middle of the ear. Mm -hmm. And right as I get in there, she's <laughs> yeah, she shakes did. her head and I cut out a whole chunk of hair. <laughs> and Thicket just went, mm. and Susan and I just hold, spun out of coronary. Yeah, she's, I said, I hold up a that long bad. chunk of hair and I'm like, it's not just a little bit. So <laughs> that happened, okay. Yeah. But other than that, that groom went perfect. Yeah, I couldn't complain. <laughs> well, At her least mom the pictures it. we got were on the good ear. Mm. Yes. I didn't think about that, but they were. Yeah. She turned out beautiful. Yeah, no doubt. Did. So even with ammo, you know, I, 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 the only thing I can, I have to say about the trim together that we did with this little guy was I just thought it went smooth like butter. It just came together extremely nice. I know Except he doesn't he didn't care like the clipper work. He doesn't. We we determined that for some reason the clipper work bothers him. Yeah. Whether it's vibration or he just doesn't like clipper work. Yeah. He loves scissor work but not clipper work. Right. He doesn't mind being he lays down for the blow dry, so it's not the noise. Mm -hmm. He doesn't like clippers. The yeah. noise of them. He ducks his head and turns and walks away. It might be that little high pitched, you know, sound he doesn't like. Yeah. Could be. But other than that, I don't think anything crazy happened when we were grooming him. Everything just kind of went as planned and was was it totally expected. Everything was just perfect. Yeah. So it was wonderful. And, and the sporting trim is one of my favorites. Mine too. And I think it's a pet favorite, a pet parent favorite. Yeah. It looks great. It looks elegant. It's still maintainable. Uh -huh. It's not this much coat. That's a lot to brush, keep brushed We're going to keep growing it out. Because yes. we're, we're going to grow all this longer. Baby's going to go through how many trims this year? She's going to have, this is the English saddle. Then she's going to have a second puppy lion trim. It's a European hairstyle. Okay. And then she's going to have, she's like, really, Mom? And then she's going to have a Scandinavian puppy lion trim. And then, yes, then... Then she's going to have maybe another English saddle to when she's got longer top. Oh, you haven't done the but talk about the continental trim. And then the continental. So you would have to go English saddle and then continental. And yeah. then after the continental, she'll probably go into the historically correct continental. Oh, there's a difference? Yes. Historically correct. Mm -hmm. I'll have to look that up. Yes. Yeah. I've cool. got a video on it. With her? No. no with but on your channel? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. It's a lot of work grooming all day because grooming is mental, too. It, it, you're always thinking, and, and some, you have to problem solve on the fly often when you're grooming because you don't foresee some of the things that you're going to fall into when you you're grooming. You mean like with our last dog? We'll get to that. We didn't get there. So then to, we come to today, yes. our third and final day of grooming together. Suzanne had lined up a beautiful <clears throat> champion soft-coated Wheaton Terrier named Maui, and he is <laughs> wowie. <laughs> yes. When did you say? I would say. <gasps> I've always loved the dog. Shit, he is something. 
So he's typical terrier behavior, but but he's sweet, very, very sensitive. But when we say that, we say that often as groomers. He's typical terrier, but it is a terrier, and he's allowed to act like one. Exactly. <laughs> If it's a bully breed, it's allowed to act like a bully breed. Yes. She has a bulldog, we understand. Yes. If it's a terrier, it's allowed to act like a terrier, we understand. And if it's a poodle, it needs to be held. Yes. <laughs> it needs to be held. It needs to be held. <laughs> and I maybe like hand fed. Oh my goodness. With his food warmed up on a plate. Look at them. They're just perfect. I told you, if I'm sitting down, she's in my lap. That's why oh, I'm standing yeah. all day. Oh. <laughs> so that's why when we were working all week and I kept feeling scratching on my legs. She, she wants, wants you to hold. Her. She wants you to go and stop what you're doing and go chill. Yes. Um, and every time you squatted down, what happened? Yeah, she would, then she would come right over to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she does. If you're sitting down, if you're in bed, forget it. She's right there with you. She will not let you sleep until you pick her up. Yeah, I'm that kind of parent. Oh, I, I am too. I get it. They mean the world to us. Yes, they do. To end our day without them would be devastating, wouldn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. So we're grooming Maui Wowie, and he was perfect. He had a couple little mats, but hey, that coat's... His mom did a good job Yeah. when you compare it to the last dog. About. Yeah, I get My it. My dogs are never matted, and your dogs should never be matted either. And that's the truth. To to say, oh, he is because is an excuse. Or I tried. Tried isn't finishing, and you know it when you come in and you say, right. I tried. And here you go, you brush it out. Right, but I don't. You know, I like him in full coat. Well, now wait a minute. You're telling me you can't brush him. You can't do it. Why am I putting, why am I going to, you know, demat and put him through all that when you're still going to let him mat and he has to wear the mats, which is very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So obviously we need to modify the trim to something you can maintain. That's what I tell my customers all the time. And what my people who watch me see is me working 13, 14 hours a day. Yes. And I let, I go home and I sew groomer's harnesses. I make the groomer's mm -hmm. harness. After I'm done sewing the groomer's harness, if I worked a 14-hour day, I didn't have time to brush my dogs. That so I go time. into my bathroom when my husband thinks I'm sleeping. Or would he tell you to come to bed and he knock it He would tell off? me to leave it. He would tell me to come to bed. What are you doing? you got to get up in the morning. I'm brushing my dog's hair because I never want to demat my dog. Yeah. That's cruel. Yeah. So... Because I never want to demat my dog, I never want my dog to have mats, I brush in the middle of the night before bed. And I don't stop until I can get a comb through them. Well, that explains why you don't accept excuses for people bringing them in matted because you're saying, hey, look, I, I'm just as dog tired as you are. Exactly. But it's important not to let them mat. So not. important. So and that's, that's it's not judging. Mm -hmm. it's, it's encouraging. Doing the right thing. Yeah, it's like saying somebody who's who uh, who is abusing themselves or others and saying, "Oh, you didn't mean it that time. It's okay. Let's let's let it happen again. It should yeah. never happen again." Oh, my husband did doesn't mean to hit me. He just gets irritated. Right, but he's not going to do it again. So we're going to wipe the slate clean. Yeah, no, the, the groomer's going to brush it all out. When we get it back home, we're going to brush it. Yeah, we promise. <laughs> and then the next time they come in, we tried. Yeah. So, anyway, I'm off my high horse. I'll stop. Okay, so that... Well, well that leads us to the next dog. Oh, wait. Were we done talking about Maui Wowie? We didn't give him a lot of kudos. What else could we say about Maui Wowie? He had a great coat. Um, it, it, it scissored perfectly. Mm -hmm. it, it, he had a little dip in, it, in the back that you had to work through. Which you did. Had since he was a baby. But it was a, it was a little bit of a coat thing, and you worked it out. He's got a cowlick. Above his shoulders, his neck comes down, his shoulders go up, and he's got a cow lick right there. And it makes a dip in his neck, and it, it's it got to be tweaked. And you did it. And you, you, you know, you tried to kind of ignore it for a little bit, and then you came back and you said, no, this ain't right. I got to fix it. 
you dampened it down because it was so straightened out so it wasn't laying right. Right. That was brilliant. And I that came was up brilliant. right behind it and just kind of took it up in a little well, bit. Just to get it to lay down. It was, it was brilliant that you saw that and saw how to fix it. I was impressed. Thank you. Yes. I learned so much this weekend. It was fun. Yeah, I did. I learned so many things that I can't wait to apply <clears throat> to my own golden doodle at home. So then... We get our last dog of the weekend. It's always the last dog. And this was one that we can, it's always the last dog. <laughs> it's always the oldest child. No, <laughs> so this is the one that we couldn't wait for because it was gonna be a, a, a different trim. We did a doodle, we, we doodled a poodle. That's what we did. A standard poodle, we doodled him. <clears throat> And you think, oh, how do you do this? What are we going to do? But explain how we got him to look doodly. Well, okay, I guess we should go back to, we were going to doodle a poodle, and we couldn't wait, and then he arrived. Let's start there. <laughs> <laughs> and when he arrived, I took one look, and I'm like, oh, no, because he was going to be brushed out before he came in. We needed coat. And I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. She looked and then I touched him. And I'm like, oh, oh no. No. <laughs> Just no. <laughs> so I'm in the grooming room with Maui Wowie. Just, you know, because he's still on the grooming table. And Charlie comes in and Suzanne comes out to... to Greet and get Charlie back into the grooming salon so we can start working with him. And she did. She came back. She took him, put him in a kennel. Not a kennel. She has a nice little suite, actually, where they just sit and hang out until we're grooming him. And she comes in, and I swear she looked like she saw a ghost. And I was thinking, oh, my God. I'm thinking, oh, my God. What? What? You know? And she came over so serious, and she's, she's live streaming at the time on her channel. She's live. So right? you can go back and watch it. Yeah, you can go back and watch it. And like, she, no. she said, he, he's mad. Bad. And we had this whole beautiful trim plan for him. None of which, all these grooms that we did for this weekend that we worked together, Suzanne didn't charge for one single <clears> groom. <throat> so it was all no charge because they were for filming <clears throat> and learning purposes. So, but that's beside the point. And to be honest with you, two or three of the owners did end up paying her anyway. They, they were really nice. They insisted. Yeah. They did. I mean, people are awesome. No yeah, doubt. They are. Yeah. They know the value. They do. But I, I wanted the dogs for us. I wanted the dogs for our purposes, not for their purposes. And if I ask for the dog, I don't charge. Yeah. I get it. I'm the same way. Because, like, Thicket's owner drove two and a half hours to get here. Yeah. Um, Maui had to grow extra hair to create today's video. Yes, yeah, she usually keeps Maui in a shorter <clears throat> trim because she doesn't like to brush and demat. And Maui, Ma Maui's a little... He's a lot of work. He don't like it so much. Right. You know? Especially not when Mama does it. Yeah, well, that's typical. My dog acts the same way. But yeah, so so these people are committed to doing these, to growing these coats, maintaining these dogs for us to share with, with you all so right. that everybody can learn really good things that they need to know about pet grooming and dog grooming and home grooming. So when Charlie <laughs> came in in a kind of an unworkable state, in fact, personally, I, I, I even said to Suzanne when I saw him, I said, well, I guess you're going to have to do a shave down. She said, I'm not shaving him. His look is his trademark mm -hmm. on his Instagram page. But that his look requires proper, maintenance. to the point maintenance. It, it can't be done any other way. Yeah. So, um, we're hoping the video helps the pet parents to learn what it takes and the timing is super important that dog has to be done in a timely manner so religiously on religiously a schedule. sometimes it can get away from you 
It does. And sometimes one bad bath or one time going swimming, going to the beach, getting caught in the rain, one time can do that to that much yeah, coat. If you in all fairness. And especially if you haven't brushed out the dead hair in a while and then it gets he goes swimming. And then it felts and you're done it's, dealing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But so. if you're at least brushing on a weekly basis and bathing at But um, he doesn't want to brush. He the telltale when he picked up, the telltale sign was if I brush him, he's going to lose his curl, and his curl is everything. Dude, he's mistaken that brushing, it fluffs out his curl, and then he doesn't look like the dog he wants. But that's right. where she created something to give back to him, to give Charlie back to him in the way that he wants Charlie. But he's going to coat it <clears throat> pristine and if well If he wants for. that, he's going to have to bathe weekly. Yeah. Properly. 100% properly. If he wants to brush the coat in between, it is going to brush out his curl. And yeah. then he, he may have to mist him back down with water to re-add the curl. It's a process to have the curl he wants. Yeah, it, it is. It's an absolute process. It can be done. It can be, and that's why we wanted to do this video for you guys. A lot of people want their doodles curly. Mm -hmm. It's a process. And it's, it's a dedication just like her coat's a dedication, just like Thicket's coat's a dedication, mm -hmm. it's a dedication for the coat you want. Yeah. So we're here to encourage you on how, and to teach you how the process works to get the result you want. So that's our story for the weekend. And that's our recap. That's our recap, and I couldn't tell you, I am very happy. It was worth the trip to Florida in a heartbeat. It was worth driving. 40 minutes back and forth, a half an hour back and forth every day to Suzanne ooh, ooh, ooh. because Priceline put me in the wrong hotel. He's going to get his face bit off. BB is mad because he's on. She was snarling at him. She's like, get off me. <laughs> Give me my boy back. She's like, Arr. hold on. How did Charlie's owners brush him and retain his curl? Sponge him? They didn't. <laughs> It wasn't curls. They were mats. <laughs> they don't want to brush him because they don't want to lose the curl. So we hope we taught them how to get the curl back by brushing and combing him thoroughly before the bath. So you can just slide a comb through, then wash him, then take the wide tooth comb, Go back through it while it's nice and wet. Scrunch the hair and let it dry. That's the way you retain the curl. Yes. All right. And um, I think we <clears throat> really nicely, easily laid that out there. I think so. To say this is how it needs to be. Uh, I just did two halves and full coat with eye groom two and one. Hubby likes their coats. Used a bathing beauty. It's not a question, but a really critical learning point for me as a non-groomer. I've always thought I needed to brush out mats and today I realized, no, you don't need to comb out mats. No, 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 no. You brush out mats, you check with the comb. The comb is a checking tool. It's not a dematting tool. So you brush, 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 brush. When you think you've got them all out, you use a comb and you go from the skin out, the skin out, the skin out. When you take the comb and you go in and you start to come out and it doesn't go through, you back it up. You don't keep coming. You back it out. Brush, brush, pick, pick, pick. Brush, brush, pick, pick, pick. Check with the comb again. Sticks. Back it out. Yeah. Brush, brush, pick, pick, pick. Check it. It slides out. Then you keep going over the rest of the dog. The comb tells you if you got the dog brushed out. Never demat with a comb ever. There's a couple of instances where I will on a very certain specific coat type. When I do it, I tell you what I'm doing on this coat type. And one's a Bedlington Terrier. And I'll explain that later. But most dogs, you tug out mats with a comb, your dog's going to hate you. Yeah. 
It hurts. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> I would like to see a quartered poodle. So would I. <laughs> We're having too much fun. We've been cracking up since we got off air. We have. We've been laughing so hard it's not even funny. It's almost like laughter is, is a healing, you know, it resets you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, corded poodles are really adorable, and there's some beautiful ones out there. He could cord, but I'm not going to. Uh, she couldn't cord. She doesn't have the coat type. I think from what I've seen on, um, um, like, dog show documentaries and stuff like that, Caring for the corded coat is a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Any corded coat, it's a yeah. lot of work. You can't just let it mat and forget no, it. Set it's it and not forget like, it. He's corded. No, he's matted. <laughs> oh you know, there's a difference. <laughs> well, thank you, Rick. He says, I just want to thank you for it, both for educating me. I've learned a ton. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and well, that's what we want is to help people. Absolutely. Put the down dog down, Amy. No. We're not getting another one. Look at how comfortable he is. Look <laughs> that at was this. your husband. I, I knew. I could tell by the comment. <laughs> I knew who it was. <laughs> yeah, he's We were talking about getting another one today when we were talking about grooming Gus. Yes. <laughs> She'll tell you later. <laughs> I'll tell you. When I get back to the hotel, I'll, I'll call you. <laughs> okay. And B, question. After brushing for an hour, Poodle goes out and tolls and puddles, rolls and puddles. Should I start again or am I okay to towel dry two days of storms as a problem? <sighs> if he's brushed and combed, I don't worry about it until the next brushing and combing day, which if he rolled in puddles, because he's just like when we combed the doodle all out, got him all fully combed, then we washed him, and then we lightly combed over him to make sure it was all straightened out. Because he was fully brushed, it's okay, you can leave it. If she goes out tonight and gets soaked in a rainstorm, I'm not gonna worry about it because she's already fully brushed out. Yeah. If there's packed in undercoat, if there's dead hair in there and they get wet, and then that'll felt. Mm -hmm. So if you maintain your coat properly, your dog can swim, it can get wet, mm -hmm. it can go out and roll in the puddles. You don't have to worry because you've brushed and combed it already. You're pulling out the dead coat when you're mm -hmm. brushing. Yeah. It's, instead of it getting intertwined in all the other hairs in the coat. Like if she got wet tonight, I'm not gonna sit her down and brush her out. She'd be fine. Because she's already brushed out. Mm -hmm. She's already combed completely, so it's going to hold. Yeah. All right. Oh, my God. Puppy room cams on a feed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Amy's hubby is on. Lots of laughs. Hi, oh. go groomer husband. <laughs> Suzanne, what is your leash collar harness policy? Do pet parents hand the dogs with all of the above or do they take them off then hand you the dog can they leave these in the salon i prefer they take everything off take it home i don't want to be responsible for it if i set it down in the wrong place if the phone rings or another customer comes in i'm halfway between here and there and i set it down oh, forget where you i need to it. keep track of the dogs yeah on the other hand if somebody else is picking up i do have a system and I do keep them if I feel it's a dog who is going to be out of control when its owner picks it up or it's hard for the owner. I do say, go ahead and leave it with me. I'll put it back on before I bring them up. So it's if here and there. I have a little gate over here. So when a pet client comes in, I prefer they take everything off, set the dog over the gate, and the dog can run free into the back of the salon. But again, it, it's it's, how would you say that word? Um, it's, it's your, it, your, your dogs come into your waiting salon and they're in a, they're in a secured area and then they go into another secured area through a gate and then they go into another secured room. 
I my salon is rural. I have one buffer of security mm -hmm. zone, my waiting room between my grooming area and the great outdoors. Because my worst fear is a dog getting out of right. my salon. And I'm on a major highway, so I'm scared too. Oh hell yeah. So I always keep the, the leashes with because I, I get them back on the leash because I always I want to make sure that so many people think that their dog follows them, doesn't leave their heels, and it's okay. And they come in, they don't even have a leash. They, they didn't even bring the dog in on leash. I, and I have busy roads by our house, too. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. She, she's like, oh, he took off because we got out of the car. I said, you don't have him on a leash? So I, I want them on a leash yeah. coming in and going out because I don't trust people. And here I have a locking door, and mm -hmm. people can't come in unless I buzz them in. Mm -hmm. So if a dog is running loose in the waiting room... The dogs are safe because that's another barrier before the outdoors. Yep. A customer can't come open the door. And when I used to not have a locking door, customers would see a loose dog through the glass and try to open the door. And I'm like, God. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway. And the dogs want nothing more than to go out that door because this ain't home. As much as they're being cared for properly, it's right. still not their home. They okay. So when I teach people what to do at home on their dogs i ask them to take their dog's toe put it between their forefinger and their thumb get a 100 180 grit nail clip file and just do this and one day just do one nail the next day do two nails mm -hmm. you know the next day do three nails and ignore them when they misbehave and when they're good or when they're bad when you finish you're like good puppy off you go mm -hmm. throw them a toy throw them a treat and i just have my clients do that we've worked some of the worst dogs in the world some that i never thought would overcome it if the pet parent does this at least once a day even if it's one toenail every day and yeah. let them go it creates it it's a habit once it's a habit the dog learns to dogs are creatures of habit whatever you do every day becomes normal and so it works so yeah. that's what i train i think that's good great advice and sometimes we have to accept that maybe there will be those few dogs that it just never just doesn't work ever overcome it yeah but that doesn't mean there's not hope because i've had Four in the last year who I never, who I've groomed for years before I came up with this, who I never, ever, ever thought. I you was, would get it. You would I get actually it. stopped doing their nails. I'm like, I'll groom the dog, but you got to have the vet do the nails. Yeah. And, and you're quite confident doing nails, but you're like, I, I just don't know how to reach this dog. Not only that, it was too, it was hard on my arm. And I feel when you cross a certain point with a dog, it almost becomes abusive. When you're forcing them through something yeah. that they absolutely hate. Yeah. If a vet and a vet tech are going to hold them like they do and do whatever they need to do, or if they need to tranquilize them, they yeah. can do that. They need to sedate them, they can do that. Those are all things I can't do. Right. I typically work alone. Whereas they have techs that yeah, can help. They have help. So sometimes that's the, that's the answer. Yeah. But like I said, these were like four or five dogs that needed that. And we overcame it. And I was... It makes you cry. Oh, yeah. that happened with me and a dog on my channel named Darcy. And I have a video about it. Um, untold stories of pet grooming i was going to start a series called untold stories of pet grooming and it really was um the, the stories that people don't often hear about pet grooming and i was the first one that i did nobody cared about it so i stopped <clears throat> but it was uh, about a dog named darcy she's a dachshund, and i still do her nails that's all she needed was nails um, she's a very short haired dog and uh, nobody could do her nails no vet nobody nobody and they Owners called me because they were referred to by somebody who they know that I groom their dog and blah, blah, blah. So I said, let's give it a shot. And the first time went absolutely horrible. 
Uh, I mean, it was bad. It was the alligator rolling stuff, mm -hmm. you know, and, and she was just, it, she could hurt herself. And my first instinct was, no, get, no, don't want to see it again. But part of me wanted to go somehow overcome that with her if I could. So we worked together many more times. And after about the third time we worked through it, that's a long story short. So yes, you can. You can work through it with some dogs, but not all of them. Not all of them. Yeah. It's sad, but true. It is sad, but true. Shall we take one more question? One more. This one I want you to answer. Um, I saw it here. Uh, <coughs> oh, BD, is, you've got to go out, don't you? Oh, Come yeah. here. This is from Zendaki. What poodle trim was the hardest to learn, Suzanne? I love watching the transformation. It was very educational. What poodle trim was the hardest to learn? Mm. The Scandinavian puppy lion. Hey. It needs a lot more hair. <laughs> and she has a lot of hair. Yeah. So that says, yeah, that would be a challenging. It's, it's hard it, to get the balance right and to figure out if you're teaching yourself, which I did. Yeah. If you're teaching yourself how to get the look. I mean, you don't have anybody who's really, really... Um, experienced in it, critiquing you and getting you there. Right. Yeah. That you gotta would be look much at easier. pictures, then put it on a dog, and then no, that's not right. And then look at pictures and put it on. No, that's not right. Yeah. And you gotta have like this much top knot, all this neck hair, and wow. all this leg hair to even practice it. Wow. Which is hard. We're so glad that we got to do this. For it was them. fun, wasn't it? And and everybody was here for us. The support was all there. It yeah. Was, it was great. And it was great. We'll, we'll keep planning these weekends there. And I had a private video crew and photographer, and that was cool. Yeah. I'll and I had a day. professional groomer doing all the work. <laughs> I can go that make. That was cool too, right? That was really cool. <laughs> that, and I got and I get to go home and edit a few videos and <coughs> throw them up on YouTube and make money off of her work. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, baby. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Have a good night. We love you. Bye. Happy weekend. I'll see you soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs>